Hello! Today's video will be about a vintage pocket calculator from the second half of 1990s. You may wonder why would you need to make a review of such an old product? Well, most of the time you may be surprised, but it's a sign of the age or the era in which a product was being manufactured and the details that were being considered with such a design. And I think this is what matters much more than the product itself, because the product itself is mostly obsolete and wasn't that great to begin with. But let's see what it makes the, it, the most important, at least when it was new. So, first of all, it's a pocket calculator that is quite small. I think it has a height of less than 10 centimeters, it, which means that it absolutely fits just about any pocket, because sometimes we have products that are considered to be pocket size, but they aren't anymore. It's also quite thin. I think it has a widest that is less than, or um, thickness that is less than one centimeter, at least towards the ends, which means that it's quite comfortable to, to keep uh, in a pocket again. It has uh, quite sharp edges, which means that it's not as friendly as you would consider. And of course, those edges are less so as the product aged and obviously was used. However, I think what matters the most is that you have your typical 8 dial or um, your typical calculator that has the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and of course division, along with the ability to uh, make a percentage uh, calculus, which means that it's quite versatile, but of course it has some shortcomings. And one of the most important ones, besides the precision that is obviously uh, for only eight um, uh, dials, is the fact that, or the eight digits to be more precise, is the fact that uh, the buttons are not that great to begin with. As you can see, the buttons are not having too much depth to them. They are quite close to the um, pocket size, uh, pocket uh, calculator's uh, chassis which means that when you press them, you don't have a, a very satisfying feel. And of course, it's quite cumbersome to use for extensive calculations. But you have to think about first what kind of product this was. This was a promotional product. It was a product you may have received if you were a client of, in this case, a particular bank that is not um, around us, as far as I can tell. Which means that being a promotional product, uh, there are some sacrifices to be made and what mattered the most was to fit a particular price, have the necessary branding that uh, was agreed upon by um, the entity that asked for this uh, product to be manufactured. And of course, um, having some utility so that the product will still remain in use uh, for a while and, of course, be appreciated for what it is. How cheaply such a product could be made? Probably a couple of dollars, perhaps even less so when mass manufactured. Of course, you would have a custom design for your um, face, for your uh, main uh, part of the, of the chassis, and the other, I think it would be quite standard. Was it a good choice or not as a product back then? I think so, because you have to think that most persons at the time, in the second half of the 90s, didn't have a computer, particularly if they were in the age group of 40 to 50 years old. So such a product would be an interesting novelty that would also carry some usability. So it was clear that it was addressing that demographic, not necessarily the one that uh, was um, probably starting an account and they would need a pocket computer to make some calculations based upon their um, expected uh, income or their expected uh, deposit they could have at that bank, so, or the loan, because this is also important. So I think that uh, it was quite a good uh, Product, but let's see how we experience how the experience of actually using it is. So let me start. It's the one of button. You have to press it not very much, but certainly, as uh, mentioned, the tile feel is not that great. I noticed that the contact is not perhaps that good. You have to think about it. It's 20 years 
products. So if the battery content is not good, obviously your screen is going to be slightly dimmer. Now it's all right. However, what I have to say straight out of the box is the fact that this uh, pocket calculator had a fantastic ability to um, have a very low uh, consumption. You have to consider that just about any pocket uh, calculator has a standby mode. And this standby mode obviously uses a bit of the battery. But think about it. The battery, I think, in this particular um, pocket calculator has not been replaced for around mm, six years or seven years, perhaps even longer than that. And you have to consider the fact that the battery, due to the uh, pocket calculator's dimensions, is not uh, a large one. It's button cell that is typically used for clocks. But let's see if this is the case or not. So I'm going to press and uh, luckily and hopefully I can manage to take out this. Yes, I can take out this part, but let's... Okay, just a bit more patience because it's old and obviously the plastic is almost crumbling. Oh yes, as you can see, it already had a modification because the battery was not pressed enough in the compartment. I think I have used a traditional way of improving the contact by resorting to this piece of paper. And obviously it did its job quite well. So this was the solution we had to use back then when we didn't have others available. So let's place it again. Uh, if you want to have an idea what kind of button cell we are using, it's um, Renata 392, which probably has a similar RR and uh, AG uh, designation that could be made. I have to think uh, about and later I will write down on the video what kind of battery is actually compatible with this type. If you want to have this uh, information, other than that, it's nothing spectacular. It's just a battery that has a better um, ability to withstand uh, consumption. And um, I think this matters in a product that is rarely used, but should be available when needed. All right, so about uh, the operation. The operation is your typical one. You press the buttons. You have to press them quite strongly, as you have noticed. I'm not making uh, that just for a theatrical effect. It's the fact that you have to press the buttons quite seriously in order to make sure they register because if you don't press them seriously enough so strong enough as you notice over here um, the, the digit is not registered so uh, let's multiply by 456 and i think it's going to be a result that is quite obvious to see of course you have your decimal um, uh, calculus ability as well so it's not a problem if you as you've noticed 32 and uh, the calculus actually went wrong. Uh, this is part due to, partly due to the design of the calculator that should have considered that I was not making another operation that should affect the initial result. Anyway, so I have to go and cancel again and start from scratch and let's make um, a different calculation but in the same way. And as you can see, it fills quite well the eight digits the pocket calculator is going to show. So actually, it's very nice in this respect. Nothing new, nothing spectacular. I mean, most pocket calculators back then and even today have at least uh, eight digits. It's the, the actual minimum you're going to receive. Some of them may have 10 or 12 digits, but um, the rule still stands that just about any computer has uh, any computer, any pocket calculator has eight digits. What I don't quite like about this model, other than the small uh, nuisance you have noticed before, is the fact that the plus and the equal are on the same button, which means that if you have more complex uh, calculation, you would have to resort to this way of considering your uh, computations. And uh, while it works, and I'm pretty sure you don't have that much trouble in uh, showing your um, results, I still think that it would be better if there was a dedicated button. But I also admit the fact that with the current feature set it was quite difficult because you would have to have another function that would be sacrificed and you already sacrificed one button by making the cancel and the on off button the same so probably there wasn't that much uh, space for um, 
and improve design unless you would choose to have another row of buttons but this would slightly affect the design or the impact you would like to have so it's obvious that there were some compromises being made and this is the reason why such compromises can be seen over here other than that it's typical uh, okay i have to press it again a bit stronger uh, it's you have to consider the fact that the buttons also show uh, wear and tear but on the other side uh, think about the fact that some buttons of um, pocket calculators from that time may already be uh, having their uh, rubber crumbling due to due to age so the fact that this pocket uh, calculator still has its keyboard in uh, good shape i think is um, quite a good testament to the design they used so 10 plus 10 percent and as you can see the calculation is done quite easily it's nothing spectacular i'm, I'm not showing something earth shattering i'm just you know, showing you how such a pocket calculator would have been very nice to have in a time where when most persons did not have a dedicated uh, computer back home and some of course if they were not even working in an environment where they should have had a pocket calculator might not even have one or might enjoy to have one that was easier to carry because your typical pocket size calculator was slightly larger than this it had roughly a format that was around um, i think one centimeter or two centimeter longer and clearly wider by one or one and a half centimeter so this meant that this model was clearly more compact of course there were even more compact designs with smaller displays but i think they sacrificed part of the usability you may have so this is the design that you, you see other than that i cannot present much more of course it has the ability to memorize and to recall the memory for a certain number you enter so that you can use it in subsequent uh, computations again nothing of shattering these were quite uh, standard features pocket sized calculators had back then However, let me show you what is inside, of course, considering that those um, screws can be taken out easily without affecting the model, because again, we are talking about old technology here. And the plastic again has more than 20 years of age. Or is more than 20 years old. Okay, let's see. I think that if I'm applying enough force over here, because I cannot grab it from elsewhere may work although okay i think it shows some promise yes it shows some promise but i think i missed one screw over here and this is an important mistake because obviously if you don't take all the screws you cannot take okay now i think it should be quite possible to move it uh, there is a different screw over here i'm not entirely sure it may not be uh, keeping the front side together so i hope we can take it out like that if not it's going to be slightly more difficult to remove it but of course nothing is impossible i think that right now the major is issue is that um, there are some clips over here and uh, those clips are making it difficult to remove the cover or the back cover let's see if that is right uh, as the pressure amplifies i still think it may also be kept right here so let's see if that is the case no i don't think i can uh, take that one easily so let's see if there is something else i'm missing okay so it seems not to be the case okay okay good good and we succeeded <clears throat> what we notice right away if you look closely is the fact that the case clearly points to the fact that it might have had um piezoelectric speaker this type of design suggests that uh, this might have been a possibility of course there is no piezoelectric speaker and uh, having a piezoelectric speaker in a pocket calculator is actually pointless but this type of uh, design of uh, recess you see over here may point to that so this is an interesting tidbit and other than that we have to take out the screws in the front in order to be able to 
uh, take apart and show you the keyboard that this pocket size uh, calculator has. Okay. Sorry, because it's quite difficult to keep it in focus, and I'm entirely sure when I'm going to move, the focus is going to be lost, so you have to bear with me in less than spectacular viewing ability. Okay. And as you notice, we have taken it out. The construction is typical to just about any electronic product of that era. You have an uh, epoxy or resin blob that hides the system and chip that is being used over here, which means the entire uh, processor, memory, and anything else that you may require for uh, communication, probably keyboard controller, and also the display um, controller. As you can see, uh, clearly over here there is some sort of um, impact from uh, humidity. I don't know if you can get the video over here. Let me focus it again. Sorry. Okay, as you notice, there is a bit of a deposit. That was probably due to uh, water ingress at one point, but it can be cleaned easily um, because uh, this kind of, of batteries do not leak, so I'm not taking uh, not considering that a leak has, has happened in the battery, rather than um, water ingress from, I don't know what kind of event. The keyboard itself is quite your typical uh, standard issue, nothing, nothing spectacular. As you can see, it kept quite well. The keyboard is your typical membrane keyboard that um, has, doesn't have individual buttons, it's just uh, a main route that is being used with extruded uh, keyboard tips and if I were to show them this is how they look. As you can notice nothing special there is a bit of uh, dust over here but uh, it's not much other than that the buttons are pretty well and those are the holes where those buttons go. Again nothing special I think the molding was uh, quite nice what else I'm noticing over here, and you can readily see as well, is the fact that there was um, designated space for a second battery. I don't know exactly what kind of feature the second battery may have. I assume it could be for a different function. It might be that uh, in this place you could put a typical digital clock because you would have the necessary space. I don't know if this was the intended functionality they had and they just adapted the design and this is offered just a single uh, pocket uh, calculator function but it might be possible and also it may explain why there was such a recess for a piezoelectric speaker because if you were placing a clock you could have uh, placed also an alarm function and in this case probably you could um, uh, have uh, the beeper activate and in this mode uh, you would require probably a speaker. So that was the point. Other than that you have your typical uh, LCD display, nothing spectacular. It is a bit uh, dirty but this is not uh, an important aspect. Dirt actually gets into a screen and it has to be cleaned otherwise it's still going to be there because you have no chance of uh, getting under the lip of the frame. So. This is how things happen. And other than that, I don't think there is anything wrong with the display or with the technology that was being used at that time. And even the plastic, I think, has survived quite well because you have to take into consideration that it's already 20 years old. And moreover, uh, for 20 years old plastic to not to be brittle, it's quite an achievement because recent designs or um, there are various types of uh, plastic formulations that do not handle that well aging. So I think this was um, a good uh, occurrence and I think also the uh, specification that required uh, such a small battery is not wrong considering how much power such a product uses. Alright, so I'm going to uh, mount it again. I think that at one point uh, this uh, pocket uh, calculator had screws also on this side but I think that um, at one point when uh, it was disassembled uh, screws were lost. Notice the fact that there are different, uh, there are screws that have a different uh, length. It's nothing new. Okay. 
going to place the free rules in the font that are actually essential because uh, you have to take into account that your LCD screen needs to have a good pressure on the flexible connector that is rubberized and you have seen over here um, with a pink and a gray aspect because if there isn't enough pressure on the screen you will notice that some of your digits may be uh, lighter and some of them may be darker and this is not uh, what you want. Uh, this is the reason why the, all the screws are placed in here because the rest of the case is actually strong enough not to flex even in the lower bottom uh, positions. Okay. So what can I say about this uh, model? Hmm. I think it was quite a, quite a good design. I don't have many things to to say against it. The only slight issue I would have is the fact that they use such um, small buttons and this meant that the design was not uh, particularly pleasant uh, to use. If they have used uh, larger buttons, it would have been easier to press and of course you would have a much uh, more uh, pleasant use. But other than that, I agree it's a design decision and there is nothing wrong with that. And again, as I said, particularly for a promotional product, meaning one that you would probably um, use uh, for a while and it's not for a truly commercial release, I don't think there would be such a major issue with it. Okay. And right now I will screw again the last two positions. So that it's quite a snug fit. Okay. A minor complaint I would have is the fact that when you're trying to take out the battery cover, you have to exert quite a bit of force, and because they haven't made um, a bigger space over here in, the, in this part close to the edge, it means that you have to force. The, the cover to detach and this means to apply force and to apply force right at the edges where um, those uh, clips are being used to, to guide and secure the cover. So I think this is a minor complaint I would have. But I think the most important one still pertains to the use of uh, quite small buttons which are not that comfortable. But again it's a promotional product, it's something that um, you can be freely offered, so yes, you, you cannot have too many complaints when uh, such a thing happens. Okay, I think it's quite securely placed. And right now we are going to see if the product works, which I'm quite expecting because it has been taken, taken apart and turned on for quite a while. Okay, pressing it quite strongly and as you can see the buttons are the issue. Alright, so... Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I think some such products may still be on the market, perhaps not in Europe or America anymore, but in other parts of the world they may still be uh, offered to uh, clients and they may still be a joyous product to see or at least a recollection or a memory of how things were handled some decades ago. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then uh, thank you very much for watching.